October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and as we approach the end of this month, we want to revisit the mission and highlight the issue that so many people in our community are dealing with. The Houston Area Women's Center Deputy CEO Sonia Corrales is joining me live uh, with some of the topics that we've covered this month. Let's go back over some. Good morning. Thanks for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for having us. So why is this mission so important? Why have we been talking about this so much this month? Well, you know, domestic violence is a public health problem, and one of the things that we believe at the Houston Area Women's Center is that we believe in healthy communities and we want to get there, right? So one of the ways that we do that is by approaching domestic violence uh, through this public health lens. So understanding that it's a public health crisis and by doing that, then we can really uh, address the issue in various ways. And by talking about it throughout the month, it seemed to um, make a deeper connection when we have had the news stories of, you know, the uh, last week officers were going to serve a warrant to someone and he came out then with a gun pointed at law enforcement. I mean, we see that domestic violence is escalating into very aggressive behavior, but what are the local stats? Like, is this year worse than previous years? Has it been escalating? What, what can you tell us about yeah. the statistics? So one of the things that we know about domestic violence is that it is the most dangerous time is when somebody is leaving, right? So mm -hmm. it's dangerous not only for that survivor, um, it's also dangerous for friends and family, and it's also dangerous for police officers who are yes. who are actually going to those calls. So we know that it's it's dangerous. I would I would venture to say that it's an epidemic. It's a public health crisis. We know that it's increasing. It increased. Mm -hmm. We saw lots of increases during the pandemic, and we're see, we're still seeing some of those um, some. Of those effects. Yesterday, the, the police chief told us that you know it is one in every four um, uh, service calls that they're that they're making. So we know that it's that it's out there, and so it's important for us, you know, as a community, to know that this is a public health problem, and we have to really look at it um, from that perspective. And trying to stop the violence before it happens, of course, is the number one thing. But we know that it's pretty prevalent in our community, and so we have to address it that way. And law enforcement on scene has made it a bigger point to, uh, you know, t disclose when the scene of a crime is related to domestic violence because they've been pleading with the public more often that when you see something, hear something, know about something, to call them. They say that they have resources to help. What would be some barriers for a victim trying to get that help? Why would somebody not call for help themselves? Yeah. So one of the things that we know about domestic violence, it's a definition, right? So knowing what it is. Domestic violence is when somebody is um, using power and control tactics to keep somebody in that relationship. So we know that that in and of itself is mm -hmm. means that you're trying to keep somebody in a relationship. So you know, obviously somebody's trying to leave is um, there's a lot of barriers that they're faced. So it could be fear, you know, fear of being killed because that person has told them that they're going to kill them if they leave. Again, we know that the most dangerous time is when somebody is trying to leave or somebody has already left. Um, sometimes it's also the children. Yeah. So it's tactics, you know, that the, that the abusers use. I'm going to take the children if you if you leave me. And so those are some of the things. The other thing is isolation, right? That person has has completely isolated um, their partner into not talking to friends and family. So a lot of times they have nowhere to go. They have nowhere to call. And mm -hmm. so, and of course, one of the biggest ones is uh, financial abuse. Somebody who is in a situation um, of domestic abuse or domestic violence, uh, oftentimes, you know, is being financially abused. So they are not allowed to work, or if they do work, they're allowed, they have to turn over their money, you know, to the abuse. User. And so oftentimes what that, that person is feeling is though they cannot leave, so it serves as a barrier. That is the number one barrier for somebody trying to leave a, a, a situation. So at the Houston Area Women's Center, we offer those services and say, hey, listen, you, you are not alone. Um, it is not your fault, and help is available. And we have all of these resources, these wraparound resources, to be able to help you from housing stability to economic empowerment to supporting you with the trauma. Yeah, that's that was what I was going to ask you is that what are the resources that the Houston Area Women's Center offers? I mean, um, it sounds like you, you have the resources on hand. How do we get those? Who how do we call or, you know, text, email? What are we supposed to do? So we have two 24 hour hotlines. 713-528-2121 um, is our domestic violence hotline. And that is um, tw available 24 hours a day. We also have a chat 
button that you can access through our website, www.hawc.org, and anybody can go to that website and then they can use the chat. Uh, but the, the services are available 24 hours a day for anybody who may think that they might be in a situation where there's domestic violence, and domestic violence does not manifest itself only through physical violence. It could also be emotional abuse, economic abuse, sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, all of those things. So if you think that you are in a situation where there's violence, please give us a call. Or if you think that there's a friend or family who might be in a situation, please give us a call. Domestic violence is it's a community issue, it's a community problem, and it's all our problem. All right, Sonia Corrales, thank you so much for coming in. We were showing the website just there, and it's as easy as clicking a button to get to those resources that you mentioned. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. And KPRC2 wants to remind our viewers that men and women alike can find themselves caught in a domestic violence situation, but there is help, and it's part of our Breaking Free initiative. KPRC2 has compiled a list of those resources. You can go to clicktohouston.com slash domestic violence to find links to all of these things that we've just been discussing.